Yeah. It is. Um, well, hello, Joy, if I may call, call you that. Okay. Um, how are you? Pretty good, pretty busy, and getting very cold. Very what? Very cold. Cold. Oh, yeah, because、um, upstate. You're, you're in upstate New York now. Yes.、Uh, do you want to give yourself a quick introduction for our listeners? Sure.、Um, so I'm Joy. I usually go by this name because I write a blog under this name、uh, about the New York life. And I'm currently in Ithaca, New York, upstate, and go back to school again. What's,、uh, what's Ithaca, Ithaca like? I've never been. It's very beautiful. It's around the mountains.、Uh, so, right now, the leaves is a peak, very beautiful. But I believe in two weeks from now, I would not want to get out of my dorm for even one moment because it's going to snow heavily. Yeah. Are you guys already expecting that? Yeah, we expect that pretty early this year, actually, is already late for the snow. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, even though, it, what is it, like four hour? Five hour drive from New York City? Yeah, it's about a five hour drive from New York City. And it's, already, and it's that different of a climate, huh? I guess it's because it's among the mountains. So, with the height, it's always easier to get、mm. colder.、Yeah. Okay, so it is on the mountains. Okay, I never knew that. Yep. So, what's the biggest difference between、uh, Ithaca and New York City? I mean, there's nothing in common, to be honest. <laughs> so,、uh, everything's different. Yes.、Uh, I mean, I have been living in New York City for three years.、Uh, I'm already, I work in Midtown, so I get used to everybody. It's so busy every single day, I get used、right. to all the skyscrapers. But Kona is nothing like that. We literally only can see mountains instead of buildings.、Uh, we can only have the very old New England style of、uh, classrooms instead of the brand new. Glass door kind of buildings. And the worst thing is that as a Chinese, there's no Chinese restaurant here. There's no Chinese restaurants there.、Uh, one, but I would not even call it a Chinese restaurant. I have very high standard about that. New York. Is it more of a takeout type of joint? Yeah, anything. Just a, just a heads up for the listener. If you see any Chinese restaurant with a name has garden in it, don't go there. It's a shitty Chinese restaurant. So, anything with garden is a no go. Yeah, like Joy Garden, Happy Garden, Green Garden, anything with garden, don't go there. All right, I'm writing that down. So, next time I'm craving Chinese, I'll avoid anything that says garden. <laughs> Be、That's、sure about it. it. Yep.、Uh, so, you're in Ithaca and you're going to Cornell now? Yeah, I'm in Cornell now. Do, what are you studying?、Uh, business school. What, what, what made you go back to.、Um, To school and study business? I feel one thing is that I'm kind of in a break with New York. I love it. I worked there three years, but it's at a moment that's draining every bit about me. I don't have more to devote to the city anymore. I kind of feel that way. And at that time, I'm thinking, yeah, it's time to go back to school. First, choose to go to DC, and Cornell, just by a very interesting moment, chose to tell me that. Yeah, we offer you a position.、Uh, after one week, I moved there to DC. So, soon I moved to here again for the business school. That's right, because you went down to DC because you were going to go to Georgetown, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember that. And then Cornell last minute invited you up. Yes. <laughs> are, you, are you happy that you chose Cornell? Yeah, actually, I do.、Um, we as Chinese have a very strong. Attachment to Ivy League. And also, my dad, my dad, for a very romantic reason, really wanted me to get in Cornell. Do you mind sharing that reason? Or is it? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I believe that he, <laughs> none, of, none of your listeners are going to know my dad. So, right. When I was a kid,、um, I remember there was one time my parents f i g h t about a woman. My mom g e t super jealous about this woman、uh, talking with my dad about all of the idealistic, political, like liberal stuff at the mid of the night. And my mom g e t furious. And then later, I finally realized the woman, she, the woman that she's jealous about h a v e nothing to jealous about because she is in America.、Uh, it's the mid of the night for my dad, but the mid of the day for her. 
and right. and my dad love about talking about political stuff, and sh- he just needs someone to talk about it. But anyway, I vaguely remember this woman for all my childhood about this woman get my very smart mom jealous. <laughs> <laughs> When I finally got my offer from、uh, from Georgetown, I need somebody to be my co-signer for my loan, student loan. Interestingly, I ask my dad for help, and my dad find me a co-signer. When I ask him, "Who who is it?" my dad answered to me saying, "Cornell." And、huh. then I realized this is the woman. This is the woman who came from Cornell and study. They're here. And then that's the woman who talked with my dad until the middle of the night that make my mom jealous. So she's the one who co-signed. Yeah, she's my co-signer now. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, and after I talk with her, I actually really like her. She's really passionate about politics, which interestingly I am too.、Um, And we talk a little bit. I'm happy to tell my friends. I was like, I find my co-signer, and she's like this, and tell the previous history of my dad and her to my friends. And this is my guy friend in China. He soon just reply me, say, "Imi, did you realize it?" I was like, "Realize what?" And he's like, "Imi, this is you. This woman is you. You talk to us until the middle of the night about politics and stuff. You don't care what our." Partner thinks about you and us at all. You're the woman. That is funny. And I was like, oh shit, I definitely is. My dad just make her girl, the woman she like. He likes. Right. So I mean, interestingly, eventually I get in Cornell. So now it's like a double coincidence of I literally, for in any means, become this woman that my. Daddy used to have a crush on. <laughs> It's wild how the world works sometimes, right? Yeah. Because how long ago was that that your dad was talking to her? Probably like fifteen years ago, and they haven't talked for a very long time too. My dad reached out to her because of me. Wow. It, it's it's more than a coincidence, almost. I don't know. I don't know. What kind of beliefs anybody has out there? But sometimes it's like a little too much of a coincidence, right? Yeah. Sometimes I feel it sounds like a good start of a fiction, a novel, stories. Right. How my dad, what my dad thinks for all of those years, and what happens like fifteen years ago. <laughs> no, that's crazy. And so this was when.、Um, Well, obviously, you were in China,、um, and then you said that he would talk to her about politics and stuff like that. Yeah. How how, how does and and obviously we don't have to go get too much into it, but how how was that、um, how was that handled? Because I know that I've at least see on the media and on the news that you know political conversations are very. St- Strict in China, but I don't know. Is that true? I mean, definitely it is true. But I have no clue, like for the personal conversation, how how bad they're listening to it. So for at that time, we just start to have something like a media message app. Is the start、mm-hmm. of the age of we just start to having it, and I guess that's、gotcha. how they talk over、uh, over the time at that time. Gotcha. And what about today? I mean, I know that you know Trump has talked about you know banning WeChat and other Chinese you know communications and apps and stuff like that.、Um, is is that an issue in China where there's no privacy、uh, with I, those type of apps? I will say yes. I would not choose to talk about politics with my friend on WeChat.、Uh, I don't think my My message has been encrypted, like WhatsApp and every other app.、Uh, mm. And also, for example, the blog I'm using, they're heavily censored. It so sometimes I post something has no relationship with、uh, politics at all, but because of、uh, because of a few word that may be sensitive, that post gonna be like locked for a few hours until they feel it's okay to post it. And if it if it is about politics. It's possible that it's the post just gonna get deleted in a bit of a time without even notifying you. 
Wow. So even with your own blog that was literally about New York City, there's a chance for it to get flagged and taken down. Yeah. That's crazy. And how, do you think that that's a good thing or? <laughs> there's no way I will think that's a good thing. <laughs> and sometimes it could get me very mad because, for example, I wrote an article. It's simply just about Michelle Obama's book. And for everybody probably read this book, we know it's just about women empowerment. But when I write it, they lock it for three days and I forgot to save it somewhere else. So oh, no. if they didn't let that article out, i um, waste five hours on drafting an uh, article that I really care and then just they just deleted it. Oh, no. That's wild. So your blog that was about New York City life and stuff like that, do you still do it right now? I still write it, but it's not as often as it was in, when I was in New York. Gotcha. And do you plan on like what what were some of the things that you would talk about so the whole uh i mean i've i've been writing the blog for many years but the reason it started to really evolve and getting a big part of my life is that about three week years ago i started to write about dating life in new york and at Mm. that time i was experimenting something quite uh progressive to most of the people the open relationship idea. Mm. So start writing that uh, kind of gave me a lot of followers to want to talk about it with me in the article or even in the real life. Uh, even if later I stop stop writing about dating, but I start to writing about more like New York and a work career path, a woman gen- gender equality and er- equity and everything. It's still ongoing, so that become a one of the habit. Sometimes I write a month, every once a month. Sometimes I write it in the short period of time. And I also have a Twitter side of the blog. Mm-hmm. You can only post like short uh, sentence and articles. Uh, right now, I'm more heavily utilize that to just share some of like my best school feelings. Like if I have a good interview or if I have something inspiration i get out of it then i quickly just write a short tweet and i send it out right Mm -hmm. do do you want to share your twitter so people can maybe follow you i mean of course but i it's in chinese so if the reader can read it then no worries well maybe we'll share it on, on instagram or on the twitter page here um no that's really cool so how would you then summarize for all of those that have never lived in New York City, how would you summarize the dating life here then? <laughs> That's an interesting question. So the dating life in New York is, how to describe it? There was a TV show called Sex and the City, and I started watching it after two years living in it. Before, I think that's a crazy idea of how people talk about that show. Later and later, I realized even after 25 years after that show has been published, it hasn't been changed much. It's <laughs> still the same idea of uh, you can meet millions of people and it's never going to get bored. But sometimes you just want to find the people that can stand along with you. And that's the hard part of it. And I still till today agree that this is about is the true description about new york dating life so it's easy to meet people but hard to get anyone to kind of stand still with you yes yeah i mean that's i think that that's pretty accurate as well i've only been here well coming up on three years but yeah it's so easy to meet people but it's so hard to coordinate and to get on the same page on a consistent level Mm -hmm. um it's got its benefits and it's definitely got its negatives, right? Yeah, it depends on what do you think of uh, think of your life. If you are confused, actually, I think New York is the best place to um, to explore. I recently started to think that um, there's two different kind of settle down. There's one kind of settle down that you never struggle before. You just find the right guy at the right moments, 
go through with it and ha- live happily after. That exists and that happens to my friends, not to me. But there's another kind of settle down is you've already seen everything, but you still believe there's something good out there or you already found it. But because you experience all of the ups and downs, so you cherish so well of whatever you are having right now. So is it more of a you just want to continue that? I don't want to call it a roller coaster, but you want you want to continue that ride? Um, no, actually, I decide to get off the roller coaster, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's because I already took the roller coaster, so I don't need to imagine what it's gonna feel like to be on the roller right. coaster. So, w- did you ever give advice to people on your blog and stuff like that? Um, I don't do it on the blog, but I definitely heavily doing that off the blog. So because of that, uh, that blog, a lot of times there will be girl uh, writing direct message to me, say, "I'm in New York too. Do you want to meet up?" And nine out of ten, I will definitely say yes. And with that, I actually get a lot of great friends out of my blog. Um, and sometimes, voluntarily or not, they will ask me for advice. And I actually quite enjoy giving that. I mean, obviously, without any names or anything else, like what what kind of advice um, or situations were there、um, where you kind of help people out? Nine out of ten is going to be a relationship problem, which unfortunately、mm-hmm. is true. Um, but if, for example, I wouldn't really give any advice that just tell them to do this or don't do this.、Uh, a quick example I can give it out is like one of my friend trying really hard to decide whether she should or should not break up with her boyfriend. And to me, I think she already lists all of the pros and cons, and still cannot make the decision. And I don't have a yes or no question answer for her either. So my decision just ask her to join my move to DC, just as a favor. Please just come with me. And with the short period of time in DC, I trying to like I just have a quick happy chat with her about life, about future, about like childhood and every everything. And she told me she feels she can have those deep conversation with me, but not with her boyfriend because she will not understand that. Mm. And then I took her to like beautiful、uh, sightseeing place in DC, like waterfronts,、right. like the street, and everybody's so nice there compared to New York. <laughs>、uh, <laughs> so she realized that she's joking with me. She's like, "You took me to all of those romantic places. Are you trying to date me?" And I was like, "That's exactly <laughs> the opposite of the thing I'm trying to do. I'm trying to tell you." No matter who you are with, or whether you're with someone, all of those romantic thing will not get less romantic or more romantic. It is about how you feel it. It is not about him or her. And、mm. after that, and also with with that, she also started to realize because DC, you know, she started to realize she care about a lot more things above her personal life, like. Like she start to talk about the people who cannot drink the clean water and what we can do for it. Just three hours in DC, and I was joking, saying that's the DC magic. You just care about other other part of the life and politics right away when you get there, no matter what.、Hmm. <laughs> so once she came back to New York City, she made her own decision. She she broke up, of course. <laughs> she broke up. Yeah, but. With this whole journey, she kind of get get through the decision herself. I give her some kind of direction, but I don't want to give her an answer. She find her own answer. So, if kind of as an example, that's what I usually. Well, that's probably the best advice anybody can give to anybody, right? It's not whether you should or shouldn't do something, but a look inward、mm-hmm. at. Where you are, who you are, and you know it's pretty. I mean, I, I'm sure people have said this a billion times, but I'll say it again: if you're not happy with yourself, and you're not happy with where you are and what you're doing, no one person's gonna fix that. Yeah, definitely. And 
yeah, it, it's sad that sometimes people feel like they can't talk to their partner about certain things or can't share certain things. And yeah, some it, it's always easier said than done, though, right? Yeah, definitely. When when you're with someone and you really care about them, you, it's hard to let go. Definitely. So that's why advice from friends can never really works because they're not you. They are not living your life. Even though they make a decision for you, you still have the right not to follow that. Yeah. No, I've definitely been in those situations where friends either tell me, "Oh, you need to like be with her," or "Oh, no, you need to dump her." Um, but you're right. I mean, all of those things you got to look at yourself, right? And kind of explore from there. No, that's awesome that you got to do that. And I'm sure your friend is very thankful for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Hope so. Hopefully. No, yeah, I, I think that that's awesome that you have that that blog and, and the Twitter and and that you've actually met up with people. I, that's insane. <laughs> um, but the, yeah, and go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, although this kind of meetup sometimes is is interesting or a little bit weird to me, is that. They have read a lot about me. I mean, it's really easy to make friends by that way because if they wanted to meet with me after reading so much things about me, it's already have a pre-assumption they like me.、Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> however, it's really always happen is that they know much more about me than I know about them before meeting up. So it will always get sometimes get into an interesting part like. I just meet them for five or ten minutes, and the woman sit across me just say, "So you write about this in your article in the last articles that you posted, but I don't understand this sentence. What does that mean?" And I was like, "Uh, <laughs> 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 that's an interesting conversation to question me about." Or when I'm about to share part of my life or experience, they they're like, "Yeah, I remember that you wrote in the article that you wrote like、uh, two months ago," and I was like. Uh, oh yeah, I did. <laughs> Now I feel like I'm kind of naked in front of a stranger. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean it, it's it's one. It's very impressive that you you did that and and that you are you know writing out your thoughts and 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 stuff like that and putting it out there. Right? It's it takes a lot of courage and definitely you got to be smart and willing to handle everything that comes with it. Yeah. And I remember the the first time I met you, or the first time I saw you actually was doing stand up.、Uh, I don't remember what the name of the place, but it was like、uh, Laughing Buddha. Yeah, it's Laughing Buddha.、Um, no, yeah. So you're obviously brave enough and courageous enough to get on stage, write your blog, and all that good stuff. So you know, I highly commend you for that. Thank you so much. But I do remember it that day because I'm so nervous for my first. Uh, first stand up over mic. I went to the bar that I really like, just a block from Laughing Buddha. I should only have one drink, but I had two. So when I was on the stage, <laughs> I remember everything I should say, but it's kind of because I prepare it too many times, so it's naturally coming out of my mouth,、mm-hmm. not really in a control way. That I'm actually knowing what's going on. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't totally like bump that sh- six minutes. Hopefully I didn't.、Uh, but it's kind of like a fun experience, and I would definitely remember not to drink that much next time. <laughs> well, your friends were there with you, and I mean they they seem really supportive. Yeah, they're very supportive of me.、Uh, <laughs> I, I probably already told them all of the joke, and as that you probably. Remember, I told many jokes about my ex, and actually, he's sitting right there listening to all of my jokes. Yep, yeah, that was that was wild that you were cracking on him, and then you were like, "Oh, by the way, he's right there." <laughs> yes, and even like later when we get out of there, and my other friend asked him, saying that like, "Is that joke exaggerated, or is that's how exactly what's happened?" My ex was like, "That's how exactly how it happened." <laughs> That's funny. No,、uh, yeah. So again, props to you. And now you're in Cornell,、uh, and you're 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 getting your MBA. Is that what it is? Yeah, it is. Do you have any goals with that? <laughs> I cannot really say that's a goal. I wanted to change kind of my career path to consulting,、uh, so I'm trying to get an offer. And I didn't realize that before joining MBA, but now I do. Is that for the first semester? 
there's nothing more important than recruiting. Everything actually get done by the first half year, and then the rest of a year and a half is just learning to prepare for that. Um, describe that recruiting. So, are you trying to actively look for roles and in internships? Is that what it is? Yes. So usually we will get get an internship offer fairly early. For consulting, it is going to be like my interviewing season, going to be like January, and even before February start, I should already know where I would be in the summer. And in the summer,、mm. it's usually once you work there and you finish your summer internship, very soon after you finish, they're gonna give you a return offer. So that basically decides where you're gonna be after what you graduate. Very early in your time in the school,、uh, the recruiting is basically including like networking,、uh, and that part I will really joke. It's literally dating. That was <laughs> dating, and the whole recruiting thing is a bit Tinder. It's just now you are not dating a person; you are dating a company, and you have the right to date more than one company at the same time. I'm pissed. <laughs> But eventually, you have to be exclusive with one, and you have to do many things to impress them.、Uh, you, but it, at the same time, they are actually fight to get you too if you are a good candidate. So、mm. right now, I definitely feel the whole recruiting thing is a big Tinder. I agree. Just one giant long date after、yeah. date after date. Yeah, definitely, it is like that. Would you, for people who are maybe debating going and getting their MBA, would you recommend it? So far, I know you've only been there for a few weeks or a few months, but I think it depends on the personality and where you want to get to.、Uh, my personality is quite extrovert, and so me, I enjoy talking with strangers. I mean, if I don't, that we we will not met.、Uh, right. <laughs> I enjoy talking with a stranger, and that's actually going to be a big help in B school because you kind of forced to talk to many strangers.、Mm. Um, so if you're very introverted and you really hate, like that's going to bring you very much a lot of anxiety. Probably B school is not the place for you just because that side of the story. And another part is I don't think B school really going to. Teach you any advanced knowledge. After all, it's a professional school, so it's more like you get in there and you already have vaguely、uh, a goal in mind. Like this is what I'm gonna get out of here.、Mm-hmm. So it's not for someone who's like, I don't know, like. So so it's more of a giant networking event. Getting an MBA、kind、and preparing for the roles that are kind of lining up that you're dating for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and there is a big part of it. I know it sounds very vague to describe, but because you are getting into the company in a high level, like you are not the entry level analyst or something, so you kind of have to prepare. They have to prepare you to. Already be able to manage other people in the correct way, so I think、right. the other part probably they're trying to teach. No, that's awesome.、Um, I think you you're a very intelligent person, and I mean you put yourself out there, and you're you know what you're doing. So I'm sure you're going to do great. <laughs> Thank you.、Um, I will. I, I do want to ask you one last thing before we wrap up.、Mm-hmm. What is your Take on this crazy 2020 election. Can you predict a winner? I cannot predict the winner because if I could, I were last time definitely going to say Hillary, but <laughs> the, apparently that didn't happen.、Uh, for this year, I don't really have a prediction for it, even though I of course hope it's not Trump.、Um, I I kind of feels like. Whatever, how much we talk about it and try to analyze it with all of our knowledge, common sense,、uh, what we read and what happened for so many years in the history of America, 
that doesn't apply. There is right. no rule we can follow this time. And apparently, I don't think Trump is following anything that our founding father trying to funding for us.、Mm-hmm. So that's really hard to describe. No, for sure. I mean, he's definitely pushed the limits of what this democracy is about.、Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, did you did you watch the debates at all? Do you, do you think do you think there's anything,、um, you know, policy wise or anything like that that might make you nervous about Joe Biden winning? To be honest,、uh, there is not much of policy I will really worry about in the Joe Biden side. But more like the Trump side because he's trying to raise the、uh, wage requirement for H one B, which going to heavily affect me. Even though, of course, my wage should not be low, but、mm-hmm. I think that policy just doesn't make any sense. And I hope all of the company actually going to working against it because there is a lot of road that is highly technical and.、Mm-hmm. Those big companies will need higher internationals to do that. Right. No. Yeah. I mean, there's a huge international presence at you know corporations,、mm-hmm. and from the bottom up, right. And so it it is strange how hard Trump has been fighting to kind of limit immigrants from anywhere.、Um, yeah. And I've had friends who were not sure of their visa status and. Aren't exactly sure what they can do if they if they go home will they be able to come back and it's it's kind of crazy to think about.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I came here at the second term of Obama, and for my personality wise, I'm definitely an Obama kind of person. But <laughs> I definitely realized that in the most recent elections, that will not be what most people are thinking, and that's not the. Best way to convince most of the people, right? So, so what do you think is going to happen、um, with the U.S.-China relations, right? Because if Trump continues, if he wins, he's going to continue putting the sanctions, or not the sanctions, but the trade war, and trying to threaten, you know, Chinese companies、uh, and all this other good stuff. But if Joe Biden wins, is he going to just drop everything? Like, what would that look like? I just think. It- Either of them gonna drop this.、Uh, this is not my original thought, but my friend who is very、uh, expertise in foreign service and everything, he thinks、mm-hmm. that in the short term is of course gonna get into war, a war, for all of the benefit and the profit they could get out of that. But in the long term, as a joke,、uh, China and America gonna be bad buddy. So eventually, they have to solve this for the common profit out of it. It's just a big erotic fight for them. Right. The way. So my personal view on this.、Um, have you seen the documentary about the Chinese company that opens up a factory?、Uh, I think it's called like American Factory in Netflix. I didn't really watch it. I know even.、Uh, I, but I don't know a lot about it. So the the premise is, you know, in Ohio and all of these other states where there used to be a lot of factories, a lot of them get shut down, right?、Mm-hmm. And a lot of the jobs go to Mexico, China, India, wherever. And so this Chinese company that makes glass decides to open up a factory in Ohio, and kind of to show that you know we have good relations between China and the U.S., but the U.S. workers are getting worked at the levels of kind of You know, stereotypical like、uh, China, right? So th- the idea is in China they're very efficient, right? And they work all day and, and they're and they do their things really fast and whatever. And here in America, we don't really do that anymore, right?、Um, and so my theory is that our industrial revolution already came and it went. So now we're reaping the benefits of it. So everybody has a different mentality. But in other countries like China and other countries where they are still going through that industrial revolution, they have a different mentality and mindset. So they're thinking work, 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 so we can get out ahead. Here in America, we're already out ahead. So the it, the work ethics are a little bit different. The environment, the culture is a little bit different.、Um, and so 
one of my theories is that in China, because they are growing so fast, I think they're coming. I, I, I think they're at the end of their industrial revolution. Um, the U.S. just can't compete with that, that attitude and that momentum. I, on the macro level, agree with your theory, but in the personal level, I realize that、um, this whole efficiency is based on a lack of individualism. Like I believe in China, we don't believe in individualism at all. That、uh, all the small personal life should be sacrificed for a bigger profit. It's usually a profit of. A, A school profit of a corporation or, or a profit of a, a a nation, which I don't、mm-hmm. agree.、Um, this sacrificing probably going to work in the short term because、uh, you are getting a big economic growth out of that. But in the long term, I don't think it's going to work because、uh, you are exhausting either the resource of the nature、right. or the resource of the human being to、right. work. The Eventually, people are gonna die out of it or choose to go somewhere that have a better、uh, work-life balance. No, yeah, that's very、um, that's very true. I've met plenty of people from other countries, and you know, yes, the United States has a lot of flaws, and we have to fix a lot of things.、Um, but yet, people from all over the world come here, and they they'd rather stay here and kind of help fight for that. Than to go back somewhere where they know it's probably not going to change much, or they have less options or less freedom. Yeah, I definitely agree with the part. Freedom is a very vague word to use when I was in China, but coming here, I realized, as you just say, there's a lot of flaws and many things are ridic- ridiculously imperfect. But、yeah. a lot of time, you will realize is it's a fair game.、Um, But in China, there is no such a thing as a fair game. As an individual, individual level, like as a female, there is a huge society pressure, societal pressure on you. On like, since a kid, they're gonna tell you you are not good at math, you are not good at、um, all of the more scientific stuff. And when you get into the college, people are gonna start to telling you you don't need to get a good job. You could be a wife or something. And once you're twenty seven, they start to really worry about you on finding a husband. With all of those things, there it's really hard for people to be different and stand out. And of course,、right. they don't appraise stand out either. So in my whole three years or six, seven years in U.S. And three years in New York, I definitely get way more support on the individual individual level and my personal、mm-hmm. growth instead of how would I contribute more to the corporate America and <laughs> United States, right? And the government and society and yeah, everything else. No, yeah,、um, that's definitely something that's very unique、uh, about a lot of Asian countries. I think. Uh, where it's not so much individualism, but we're all in this together, so we all have to pitch in, right?、Mm-hmm. Uh, even in Japan, oh my god, they it was it was a wild trip over there, but the mentality is just so different. I think subor- subordination is a big part of it,、uh, but seven years in, I already don't have that in my blood. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, yeah. Here, it's every man for themselves. If you want to do something, you do it, right?、Mm-hmm. And so, no, and so it's awesome that you know you're here and you're going to Cornell and looking to improve yourself, and hopefully, you continue doing the blog and the Twitter stuff. I will definitely keep doing.、Uh, recently, I've been pivot to write more about the like business school journey of it. And it's usually short, but I definitely will continue blogging. Yeah, and then maybe one day you'll do some more stand up. Yeah, I really miss this thing. I think New York right now is opening the outdoor、uh, stand up. I don't know how good that will be like, but I definitely don't think Zoom stand up gonna work. Oh no! It's not that video stuff. Is just no way. No, no. It's 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 not real. You've I even realized that during my network. At first, I thought 
I thought that Zoom thing actually is very friendly for people actually scared to meet other people. Mm -hmm. And then I later realized as a kind of a comedian to be, I need to see people's reaction to say the oh, yeah. word. And I cannot have that delayed for three seconds. I need right. that in a one-tenth of a second. Yeah, it's uh, stand-up's definitely a relationship between the, the person speaking and the audience. And you just can't do it well if one side is missing. Yeah. Hopefully the pandemic is over soon and uh, life can get back to normal. And yeah. Can't come soon enough. Yeah, definitely. Well, Joy, I really, truly appreciate you coming on and talking to me about your life and your viewpoints. And um, and again, kudos to you for everything that you're doing. And you should be very proud of yourself for continuing to, you know, advance yourself. Thank you so much. And I'm really glad that like you invited me for this and have all of the good conversation that we had. Yeah, absolutely. It's been my pleasure. I will talk to you later. Talk to you later.